Yeah. Yeah, I think every day is a step in the right direction. Is he still? Would you still turn him this week to week, or does he go day to day now? I'd say week to week. Overall, I mean, what does this what does this feel like going into this game? I know we I talked about it on Monday, but as you get through the week with this opponent being there, what's it like? You know, having prep with them for so recently, how do you how do you bounce that from the I think it's good. You know, we we just did this with Baltimore back to back weeks playing the same team, so um, it, it is a little bit unusual the way that the season has unfolded here in the last four weeks for us in terms of playing two opponents over the last twenty eight days. Our guys handled it well. Um, and again, you know, it's it's what is this? What, what game number is this for us? This is uh, 20, eighteen. 18. Yeah, twenty. However you want to look at it. So um, they understand, you know, the the process we follow each week, and they've done a good job handling it all. You guys, you guys talk about, you know, we'll take whatever we can get. Sometimes motivation, or we'll, you know, whatever. You all get slided throughout the year. Coming off the Super Bowl, a lot of people did kind of put you in the same echelon as Buffalo and Kansas City. How do you feel like that played in the locker room as y'all went through the season? Um, I mean, we, we know that we're the defending AFC champions, you know, and so there, there's an edge to this team where we're not an underdog to anybody. And so I, I think that's that's just been the feeling we've had all season. We don't really care what anybody else says about us. Um, we know we belong in the field with every team in this league. It was a very unique defensive football team to prepare for. It seems like Buffalo is also a very unique defensive yeah. team to play with. To what, what is it that makes them different? They're really smart. Um, they're well coordinated, and, and you can just tell they've got high football intelligence just across the board on defense, on top of all the talent that they have. And so, um, you know, they've they've done a good job. There's they've got a lot of depth at corner. A lot of guys have played in there. Um, their two linebackers are, are as good as any group we've played, and um, just top to bottom, really good, well coached, smart defense. They don't they don't make mistakes. They don't beat themselves. Um, so you know you gotta you gotta take everything you can get when you play against them. What have you seen from uh, Jackson after he loses a position battle? How has he responded to that, and how is he a different player than he was last year? Yeah, his attitude's been great. He's continued to work, knowing that his opportunity could come at any moment, at any position. Really, I happens to be a left tackle right now, and um, I think he's really taken a hold of it and worked and listened to Frank and Derek, and you know, pr- proud of the progress that he's made. The maturation process is is obvious, I guess. What what is it about that part of things that you've noticed the most with, in terms of uh, him maturing a little bit as a player and a person? Well, I think any time a, a player goes through their first, second year in the league, um, you know, it can be different from college. And, and just playing offensive line is difficult. You know, you're, you're playing against a whole different uh, breed of player, you know, when you get up to this level. And I think Jackson's done a great job of, of uh, taking everything he's learned from his first year and putting himself in a great position to be successful. Is that kind of Dawson Knox has touched on five straight games for the Bills. When you see him, how do they scheme him up and what's the I think um, not only is he a great player, but they've got so many good skill weapons that um, it just allows the quarterback to, to take advantage of the, the matchups or the open zones, and you don't really have to force the ball to anybody. And so that's that's they just got such a wealth of talent there. That receiver at tight end, that running back, and of course a quarterback, um, that it allows – you know those guys to, to win their matchups, or or when you get the coverage looks for zone coverage, they they do a great job taking advantage of. Them. But Dawson's he, he's done a great job. Jamar was saying that the biggest thing in the red zone, Zach, is details, making sure yeah. everybody's their details down. What are some of the biggest details in your mind that go into successful red zone offensive execution? The, the timing is critical, you know, because those those windows are so tight, they don't have a lot of grass to defend behind them. You know, and so the, obviously the, the safeties are tighter and they're not going to back up. And so, um, you know, the, the, the rhythm, timing, and accuracy has got to be perfect down there. And I think, you know, that, that um, skinny that Jamar caught against uh, Cleveland, you know, that, that's a good example of, you know, you, you don't have any room for error there. The ball's got to be out on time. That window's going to evaporate quickly. And uh, our guys have done a really good job playing fast. You know, it's it's we don't get a ton of red zone clips every game. You know, we, we have everyone you had last time, it wasn't many. And so you got things that maybe you've schemed up and carried over week to week, and we practice them every Friday. And then um, they're, they're really greased up and ready to go when you finally get to call them in the game. Unspoken communication gets talked about a lot uh, on the outside in mm-hmm. all circles. To you, what does that mean, like in a situation in the red zone? Well, I, I think the the nonverbal part with hand signals you'd be you'd be talking about um, just quick eye contact, but um, you know just understanding that the nature of how the the individual defenders playing you and where the ball could be located. I think that's 
you could you could argue that's nonverbal communication between the quarterback and the receiver being on the same page there and understanding you know what's about to happen based on the look they're getting and um, again that takes a lot of time on task with Joe and all the receivers he, he spends a lot of time in the summer training camp during the season um, I've told you guys before our, our individual periods and our group install periods are, are maybe even more critical than our actual team periods at times because that's where they, they get a lot of that chemistry. Kind of to that point a little bit, we heard y'all last year preparing for the AFC title game, piping in a lot of noise mm -hmm. at Arrowhead. It didn't sound like talking to guys that y'all were doing that this week. I mean, how much is that going to – how do you kind of get ready for the amount of noise and what goes into how much you guys pipe in throughout that week? We've only practiced one day this week. So um, it, the week is still very young. But, it, again, there, there's a lot of challenges when you're faced on the road. Um, especially in Buffalo. Buffalo is a loud place. They do a great job. And so we, we've got to get our guys ready over the course of the week. So do you, do you plan on doing anything similar to them, like making sure you pipe in a ton of noise? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do whatever we can to make sure our guys are ready for it. Jamal was silent for a while. Uh, What's that? For, for a little while. Do you practice going silent, even though you may not have a tough outdoor opponent for like two or three weeks? Do you work on it on the interim basis there? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we got to make sure our guys are always on top of it. And, um, again, they, they do a good job. It's, it's you know, Ted and, and Joe that drive the communication initially, but everyone's got to be on the same page with it. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, thank you. Like Jamal was saying, he thought that uh, the more he's played, the more you've figured out what he can do in certain situations, and then it's kind of grown from one year to the next, uh, moved him around a little bit and knowing what to call when. Would you agree with that? It's kind of, just, it's kind of getting a little bit easier to – yeah, I'll start by saying there's nothing he can't do. And so uh, it's that part's pretty easy. Um, I think as we've just, you know, all these guys have been here now for, for a long period of time when we added Hayden. Um, it's just making sure everybody's in the right position on a play and, and getting to do what we want to do. So, again, there, there's a lot of flexibility there with all of our guys. Um, about every one of them could go inside, outside, whatever you want to do with them. And, and uh the biggest thing is them just understanding the concept and what we're trying to achieve. And so they're not memorizing a play. They understand the concept. And so that allows you to move them around a lot more. Jamar specifically, he's got a great understanding of all of our two- and three-man concepts and how he fits in. And, and um, you know, he's he's been – the touchdown he caught the other day, he's really been at different positions on that play. That game, we just happened to put him outside in a bunch and he got the shallow cross coming across. But other times he's been on the other side where he's, you know, number one in the progression. And, and so just his understanding of the big picture allows us to be able to do that kind of stuff. So, is it, I mean, it's almost like putting him in the slot and not really – <clears throat> yeah, however you want to look at that. But, but I mean, we he caught plenty of balls from the slot last week, you know. And so um, you never want to let teams off the hook by taking them from the outside and getting those one-on-one -on -one opportunities where guys get more on an island. But at the same time, he's he's got the strength and the quickness and awareness to play inside as well. And, and that's why he's just such a rare player that way is, is uh, there really isn't a, a weakness to where you put him. It, he can do it all. Joe Burrow was saying that snow is the same as playing in rain. Right. What challenges does snow present for a quarterback? Um, I've played in snow once, so um, you know I'd just be I'd be saying what I've seen from people typically. Um, it's obviously colder; your hands get colder, you know, and so it's a, it can be a little bit more difficult to grip it. Joe does a great job um, preparing himself for that you know, to where he can do a great job gripping the ball. Um, rain's a whole different animal. You know, it's just slick, and, and it's up to, up to the people taking care of the football is usually at that point. How good is Ed Oliver compared to some of the other interior defensive linemen you faced over the years? We played a lot of good ones. Ed's, Ed's up there. You know, he's uh, really quick, really powerful. If he gets you off balance, you're in a lot of trouble and uh, can be really disruptive in the run in the past. So, um, you know, I, I – I, Played him in 2016 when he was at Houston right here and at Nippert. And uh, that was my first awareness of him. Actually beating Oklahoma the week before when he did that. He, he was awesome in that game too. Um, so he's been on my radar for a long time. And uh, he's done a great job in this league. And, and again, he's a big challenge for us. John talked about you know, helping in certain ways when you feel like you guys need it. You, if you have to, if you, have to you know, slide protection inside compared to outside, how does that maybe affect, the, generally speaking, affect the schematics of the offense when you do it that way, when you have an interior pressure coming instead of maybe an exterior one you're more worried about? Mm. Uh, yeah, there's, there's different ways you can combat that. Generally speaking, um, 
you know, you're getting a slide one way or the other. Um, so it's not unorthodox, but, uh, you know, he's not the only good D tackle they got too. They, they got, they got uh, a lot of depth there on the edge and inside. I know losing Vaughn wasn't ideal for them, but um, they've drafted really well at, at all those spots to, to have these reinforcements at this point in the season. That's kind of why, you know, teams think that way. And so they've, they've got a lot of weapons there that you got to be aware of. And their backers are really good pressuring. They'll bring nickels, they'll bring safeties, they'll bring corners. Um, so this is one of the few teams that really, you know, as I say that, probably every person on their defense is pressured, you know, and, and you don't go into every game with that. How unique of an animal is Josh Allen in the red zone? Uh, for what he can do, and with obviously with his legs, but I'll yeah, the tight end aspect of what he brings as a runner. It's it's just really difficult when you when you add in not only is he, uh, you know, a, a tremendous passer, um, accuracy, arm strength, decision making. Um, then you add on the the fact that he's he's a giant human being and will run and and try to run you over. That, that's that's tough, you know, and that's why he's – that's one of the reasons why he's had a lot of success because he's, he's kind of a, a dual threat that way. Um, they design the run game around him a lot of times, you know, and, and he's not afraid to, to carry it and, and run for it. So it's a, it's a unique challenge. Is it is particularly unique in the red zone, though? I mean, are there things they do with him in the red zone that maybe they wouldn't do between the 20s? Um, I mean, they, they do a lot of stuff with him all over the field. But, um, you know, he's – down there in the red zone, you know, when you're you're adding an extra blocker to the equation because your quarterback is carrying the ball, that's that can be problematic. What are the qualities that make Hubbard, uh, you know, man of the year, captain, leader? Oh, what are those qualities you see from him every day? Um, just cares cares about everybody else a lot more than himself. You know, he really shows up to work every day. Sets a great example for veterans and young players. Um, so dependable for the coaching staff. He's not afraid to communicate with me, you know, and be a leader in the locker room and, and, and tell me things that the locker room, you know, is expressing. And that's that's not easy for guys. You can be a captain and still not have the, the confidence to, to be able to take that initiative, and he's done that. He's done that for a long time, and I've always appreciated that. Um, he just represents this city so well, you know, the city, Moeller, Ohio State, the Bengals. Um, so, again, you can't say enough good things about Sam and, and uh, his family and the entire community. Things in the trenches weren't perfect during the run last year. Does that experience help losing when, when you've lost three linemen, knowing that you can do it and overcome it? Yeah, you know, it just it feels so different for us right now. Just our team feels different. We feel like we're we're even in a different place on offense, and so. Yeah, you learn from all the experiences we've had. Um, we always store that away and make sure we learn from it. It, it. A lot of that stuff feels so long ago, you know. And and sometimes you're you're facing different teams with different strengths, and it's just, it, it's, yeah, that's in the back of your mind. But at the same time, this is just really a different year for us. I know this is kind of a difficult question to ask, but how is Joe better as a player and in the pocket? How have you seen him grow this year? Tonight? You know, he's he's always been so consistent for us. Um, just plays really fast. You know, it's um, – that might sound lazy, but he, he just – he processes things really quickly, um, gets the ball out of his hand really quickly, and, and uh, you know, just does such a good job identifying defenses. That's why defenses are trying to toy with him so much now. You know, they're trying to disguise everything because they don't want to show him the look. And, um, you know, that's the next step in his process. He does a great job of understanding that. Um, I think the, the throw to Hayden Hurst – down to the inch yard line was a great example of that. They're, I didn't think that they were going to play in a two safety zone based on the look, um, and he changed the play and they played two safety zone and he caught the bender right right above number six and um, we were down to the one yard line. So he just he sees it at a different level and that's that's why he's such a premier player.